Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name's Timster. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add cutscenes and movies to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So this tutorial is from uh, tutorialsforblender3d.com. So if you want to, you can go ahead to their website and you can go through their tutorials, scroll down until you get to the video texture module. And you can click on that and follow the instructions. I'm going to be doing this in version 2.7 of Blender, so it isn't just the old versions that it works in, it's working in the newer ones as well. And basically what I have here is my movie screen, called movie screen, and it has a few properties and an always sensor running the script. And now when I press P, we have a video playing on our screen. So that is pretty much it. So without further ado, let's get started. So file new, make a new blend file. Um, click Blender game. Uh, we're going to change it to GLSL. Animation frame rate 260. And um, this cube we don't need. So we can press X and delete the cube. Then we can press Shift A, add a plane, and press S to make it nice and big. And then we're going to call it uh, Movie Screen, like so. Then we can press SY and scale it on the Y axis. Then we'll scroll along and give it a new material. So click New. Now this is very important, the material name. So um, I'm going to call it just Screen. We're going to be putting that in a property later, so make sure it's not too complicated. Then we're going to turn off the specular, and we're going to turn on shadeless. And just for this example, I'm going to leave back facing on. Then I'm going to go to the texture panel. So I'm going to add a new texture. It's going to be image or movie. Uh, then we'll select UV, and we'll click open, and just select a random image, just to sort of see if it's working correctly. So maybe just this one. And so then if we go into texture view, like so, it'll look funny because we haven't unwrapped it. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode down here, then press U and unwrap. And then that will unwrap it like so. And as you can see, it's sort of unwrapped funny. But I'm going to press tab one more time to go back into edit mode. And then I'm going to make a new window. Down here, I'm going to select UV image editor and we haven't assigned it an image yet, so it's perfectly square. So if we go R90 and then enter, that should spread out the texture like we want it to be. So now we can press tab and the uh, changes will stay like that. Then the next thing we're going to do is move it along like so. I'm gonna close this window just by going like that. And then I'm gonna go to the game logic. Um, here I'm gonna select textured and we're going to add an always sensor and a python controller and we'll join the two together then this always sensor has to be on true and then here we're going to add three properties under the properties panel our first one here is going to be a string second one will be a string as well and the last one will be boolean the first one is going to be material with a lowercase m Second one's going to be movie with a lowercase m as well, and the last one's going to be loop with oh loop with a lowercase l. Okay, so now in the description will be a link to the script we're going to use for this. This is for versions 2.6 and upwards of Blender, uh, as the old script doesn't seem to work. So go ahead and get that. Then we'll click new to make a new text file. And you can call this, you can just leave it at text if you want to, or we can just call it movie.py. And then press enter. And so now once you've downloaded the file, you can either click file open and find the file, or you can just copy what's in it and then paste it in, like so. So just control V and it should paste in like that. So for the material here, for the string, what we need to enter is the same thing we put here. So my one's just screen, so I'm going to put in screen and then enter, like so. And then for the movie here, we need the exact name of the video file we're wanting to open. So I'm going to go into my folder here, and my one in this case is called BGE PK trailer and then space 1. 
So I'm guessing this is capital sensitive, so you want to get all of those right as well. So I'm going to go back into Blender, try to remember that. So BGE, PK, and space again, and then trailer with a capital T, and then space, and then one. And then the end part you need as well, so dot MP4. And then I can click out, and that should be done. And now in here in the script, we'll select it, so movie.py. We should be able to press P, and something should work, but it's not. And the reason for that is, we haven't saved the file. So what we need to do is click Save As, and we need to call it something, so maybe I'll just call it test number two. Uh, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to go to my desktop, I'm going to go to the cutscene folder where I have the movie file, which you can check by just clicking here, so there it is. Um, and then I'll click Save As Blend File. So once that's saved in there, now if we press P, there we go, we have it popping up. So it is upside down, so we can easily change that by going to the UV image editor, press tab, and then press R180, and then press enter, and now if we press tab to go back into normal view, and press P, there we go, it's the right way around. So there you go, that's how to add cutscenes or sort of little movies to your games in the Blender game engine. Now typically what you do is um, you get your camera here, press Alt-R to get rid of the rotation, so it's facing downwards. Then you press RZ90, and that's upside down, so RZ180, making sure the arrow is facing this way. Then I'm going to drag it over here, and drag it over in this direction. And once you've got it round about right, we can press numpad 0, and that is way too close. So I'm going to press GZ, and we're going to move it something like that. So you want it to fit in most of your screen. You might want to scale this, maybe. Or you might just want to change the resolution of your camera. So if you go into the render settings here, you can change the resolution to match this. So now if we press P, there we go, we have our movie going. If you wanted to, you can also in the world settings, set it to black. So it matches the plan background, like so. And also one more thing we can do is, if you wanted to have this, say, happening in-game, then, say for example, we'll call this cutscene. So this scene is called cutscene, and then, or maybe we should just call it cut, because it's already a scene. Uh, and then I'm going to just make another one. I'm just going to pretend this is my main game file. So I'm just going to pretend in this one I've set up a nice big world and I have lots of objects in it that can move around. Um, just like so. Okay, so I'm going to pretend this is my main game. And then say for example I wanted to switch to the cutscene when something's triggered into one of my objects or the player for example. I could add a keyboard or whatever sensor you want to trigger it. Uh, then uh, you'd add a scene and then you join the two together. Instead of scene restart, we want to change it to set scene. And here you'd select cut. So cut scene, so then it goes to the cut scene. And then we'll turn those all off. So now if we press P and we press Z, there we go, cuts to that, and we have our thing popping in. Now what we're gonna do is go to our cutscene and just to make it so it goes back to the original game once the cutscene's finished. So I want this to change back to the original scene when it finishes playing. So I'm gonna add a new property here and this one's going to be called timer. It's gonna be an integer and what that's gonna do is we're going to add a property on this side and it's going to add to the timer minus one. And my video here, I'm going to add an end controller and join that up. And then the video I'm playing here is around two minutes and 14 seconds. So we'll get our, our calculator and we'll type in two minutes and 14 seconds is roughly 124, so 124, and then we need to times that by 60 
for each logic tick. So I'll click enter. So that's how long my video is. So I'm going to enter that in there. I'm going to set that on true so I can see what's going on. Also, under your display in the render settings, make sure you select debug properties so we can see what's going on. So the next thing we're going to do is here, when the property timer is equal to zero, then it's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to switch it to, oh, if we can get them to join, use an and controller. Um, what we wanted to do is set it back to scene main once it's finished and also what we wanted to do is we wanted to reassign um, timer with 7440 so basically just to reset it so if we press P you can see in the top left hand corner the timer is gradually going down so I'll cut back to it when it's nearly finished okay and as the timer is getting lower and lower we can see our trailers beginning to end and we'll just watch it for a little bit more there we go there's the end part and there we go it's switched scenes to our original so it did slightly cut off the video just by a little bit so to check it, it was working right I could play it through a couple more times but that is basically how to get it going properly so hopefully you learned something and enjoyed the video if you did feel free to leave a like a comment or a share all of that stuff is greatly appreciated but until then I'll see you guys in the next video